So colleagues and also participants online, uh, we will start the uh, webinar already now. I do believe that more uh, participants and colleagues will come in, but uh, for the sake of time, uh, let's start already. And uh, welcome everyone to join the webinar today. Uh, my name is Fong Wang. I work in UNEP on uh, circular economy and sustainable consumption and production. Today, the topic of the webinar is on green public procurement of ICT products. Uh, especially today, uh, we'll be introducing uh, an initiative called CFIT, that was the full name Circular and Fair ICT Pact uh, to everyone. Uh, as we all know that um, ICT transformed the way we live and also the way we work and also the way we receive and uh, sending information. And also without ICT, we wouldn't be able to gather with everyone today also to discuss with all of you. And especially ICT is a very, very important economic sector uh, in Asia as well, because Asia exports a lot of um, ICT product and service to the other continents, as well as um, consume a lot of uh, ICT product within the, um, the continent. Uh, in this topic that um, ICT product brings a lot of uh, innovation, knowledge and convenience to our life, but at the same time also causing um, impact to the planetary crisis in terms of nature, climate and pollution. Uh, while UNEP and also together with our member states and governments and business to work on the sustainability issue of the ICT product, um, we do believe procurement is a very powerful tool that can create and also enhance the market for more circular products. And uh, this is the reason today we organized a webinar uh, about bringing public procurement of ICT products and also introducing you this um, new um, initiative. If I may go to the next slide. I will give you a very brief walkthrough of the webinar today. Uh, today we'll have a first re opening remark, and then we'll talk about the ICT uh, overall as a sector, uh, the sustainability and also potential uh, of public procurement to contribute to the ICT sector. Uh, then we'll introduce the work briefly on green public procurement in UNEP and why do we work with CIFIT on this topic. And then there will be an introduction on the circular and fair ICT pact. After that, we will have a session uh, for discussion and also question and answer. Then we aim to close the webinar um, after around one hour and 15 minutes. And before we start, uh, there are some simple and very easy house rules. First of all, the session has already been recorded. And after the webinar, we'll be sending you the, um, the recording uh, plus the slide we are using for everyone to, for your reference. Uh, in the meantime, uh, for the sake of interaction and also uh, exchange and the question and answers, we really encourage everyone to use the chat box as, as much as you can. It's at the bottom right of your screen. If you click the button chat, you should be able to input your um, messages and questions. If you want to share any information, links, documents or questions, please do um, put in the chat. In the question and answer session, we expect you to already pre-type uh, your questions in the chat box so that we can uh, decide who can have the floor to raise the question and also discuss. So please do use the chat box as, as much as you can. And then uh, finally that uh, today we plan for one hour, 15 minutes, but we might go a little bit over time if we need the time for more uh, lively discussion and uh, we we'll promise we'll not go more than one hour and a half, uh, half an hour after that. So um, this is a, a very simple flow of the uh, schedule for today. Uh, without further delay, I would like to hand over the floor to Ms. Yumi Chang, who is a research specialist in the Korean Environment Industry Technology Institute and also has a very good knowledge on procurement. And uh, Yumi, the floor is yours for give us an opening remark. Thank you. Can you hear me? Um, the connection doesn't sound very good. Maybe you can, you can test it again. Um, can you hear me now? It sounds better. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, sorry for not using the video because of the connection. Um, first of all, I'm very pleased to open the webinar for the Green Public Procurement of ICT. Um, I would like to thank for the participants who logged in to, to the session, regardless of your busy schedule. And also would like to share my sincere appreciation to the secretary for organizing the meaningful and interesting session. 
the world debates to tackle triple planetary crisis, namely climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution, highlights the importance of sustainable production and consumption, and emphasize the green sustainable public procurement as an important means of working together, government, private sector, and multi-stakeholders all together. Technology, innovation, and science is a key cross-sectoral means to enhance socioeconomic development and environment. We are heavily reliant on technologies, and there is no doubt that the importance and the dependency of human on the technologies will continuously increase in various aspects. However, technologies including ICTs should be used with caution, minimizing adverse impact to the environment generated by mining raw materials, extensive resource use, and e-waste. ICT sector is increasingly involved in efforts to permit resource efficiency and circular economy from the design stage with the whole life cycle approach. Three R, re reduce, reuse, recycle concept could be also taken into account when we discuss the policy of green public procurement of ICT. Personally, I'm very much interested in looking into the link. Um, apologies, Yumi. I think uh, we we lost you just a bit. Um, so maybe Yumi, you still might be reconnecting. I had a sense that you might coming already to your end of the opening remark, uh, but if we miss any of your message, please also uh, share the chat, share it in the chat. And thank you so much for already giving us a very brief background and uh, uh, really appreciate that, okay? So um, without further delay, I would like to introduce to already the next session. Um, the session will be providing an overview of the ICT sector, and the session will be um, delivered by two colleagues, um, Marik Wiedestein, from, a senior advisor from Eichwaterstadt uh, of the Dutch government, and also by Kuno von Heidt, a strategic policy advisor in Eichwaterstadt uh, of the Dutch government. Uh, so I will now hand over the floor to both Marik and Kuno for your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fong, and um, also thank you, Miss uh, Miss Chung, for these great opening words. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, can you confirm that the screen is visible for everyone? That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, super. All right, so before we um, go into the, the circular and fair ICT pact, we wanted to, to um, like Fong explained, um, give a bit of background on uh, the challenges uh, in the ICT sector and also how pub sustainable public procurement could be uh, a means to address those issues. Um, now my screen is freezing. Ah, there we go. Um, so as was mentioned also in the introductory world, uh, words, our world is really built on ICT. In the last decades, we've seen a tremendous growth of the ICT sector. Um, and it's given us lots of opportunities, um, for instance, uh, for meetings such as these with uh, representatives from many countries um, around the world. Without ICT, this wouldn't have been uh, feasible. At the same time, we also see um, that the ICT sector um, and this rapid growth has um, has a, a flip side. Um, for instance, if we look at the CO2 emissions associated with ICT, it is sometimes said that it even already surpasses those of aviation. So when we look at the entire life cycle of ICT, um, which is a long uh, cycle um, with many steps, um, and each of these steps can be uh, potentially confronted with um, social and environmental challenges. Um, in the mining stage, like Ms. Chung also ident identified um, issues like um, biodiversity loss, human rights violations uh, can occur, but also um, uh, working conditions that um, have much to 
uh, to ask for uh, for people working in those mines. Um, the design phase is uh, a phase that may not always be thought of as a stage in the production chain where uh, impacts are actually made, but through decisions in design, um, companies can really determine whether um, products are very well repairable or recyclable. And that, of course, also has an impact on the sustainability of ICT. In the production phase, we um, are all aware of uh, challenges that may occur, including um, working conditions uh, that could be improved relating to low wages, long working hours, but also occupational health and safety risks, as well as an impact on climate and environment. Um, and last but not least, the rapid growth of the sector also results in an enormous pile of e-waste. And at the moment, uh, we see that we don't um, uh, treat the e-waste um, in the way that is most uh, socially and environmentally responsible. Um, so while we know that the ICT sector is also working on all of these topics and uh, awareness across the supply chain on uh, improvements uh, is really uh, evolving as well, um, thankfully, we realize that as consumers of ICT, uh, whether we're corporate consumers or uh, private consumers, we share a responsibility to contribute to, um, uh, to the sustainability of the sector as well. So what does that look like and what can we contribute uh, to a sustainable ICT sector? Well, in order to determine that, it's really important to think about uh, the life cycle of ICT products. So what, where you can make the biggest impact will differ a little bit between the different types of ICT products as well. So if you look at the graph here on the slide, uh, which is uh, the CO2 uh, the carbon emissions uh, of the iPhone 12. Um, this is an assessment done by Apple itself. You see that um, actually the biggest carbon emission um, occur in the production stage of the uh, of the iPhone. So that means that we really need to think about how we can, as procurers, influence uh, the impact of that particular stage. Um, elements that we can think about uh, to do so is to buy less products and to use the products as long as we can, but also to engage in dialogue and by setting criteria, green public procurement criteria, um, to ensure that production of products becomes more sustainable. But also in the use phase and the end of life phase, we have um, opportunities to make an impact. And this is also the way um, that within the circular and fair ICT pact, we look at procurement. Um, so we're trying to uh, take a next step and to look at procurement in a more strategic way. Um, so really looking beyond the tender alone, which is um, the traditional approach of green public procurement, the focus on the tender stage, but also to um, take more, look more strategically at the pre-tender and the post-tender phases, um, thinking about um, uh, the ambitions and the strategy that we're taking um, and really identify the need for ICT products prior to the tender and um, look at how we can use products better in the use phase, but also think about what we do with our products at the end of life. So this also shows that um, it's not only in an organization, the people um, that are dealing with the tender stage that can really make an impact to improve the sustainability of ICT. So we wanted to um, go through uh, very briefly some examples um, that show um, yeah, how, and how, how the impact can be improved in each procuring organization. Um, so we've tried to collect some real life examples from uh, people, uh, from organizations that we've worked with and that we know. And um, well, this one is an example for the pretender phase and um, belongs with um, what we look at as trying to buy less and buy better. Um, so in, um, in this particular organization in the Netherlands, um, they had the opportunity to procure really state of the art and sustainable screens. And when they were looking at the environmental impact of their latest procurement, they realized that in fact, the environmental impact had gone up rather than down. 
so when looking and analyzing at um, how this could have happened, they, um, they noticed that with the procurement, the decision was also taken to provide all workstations with two screens rather than previously just one. So you can imagine that even though in the, in the tender stage, the really uh, best options were selected for sustainable screens, the total impact of the ICT uh, procurement actually um, came out negative because, um, well, the, the, there was a duplication of the appliances that were being bought. So with this in mind, it's really important to be critical about um, uh, what it is exactly that an organization's need prior to procurement. And um, well, in, as, as many of you, you will know, being involved in green public procurement for a long time, in the tender stage, there are a lot of opportunities to buy better, to ensure that the products you buy um, are better than average and um, with re in relation to all aspects of the product supply chain. Um, some really, uh, so examples of criteria you can include in a tender is um, buying uh, refurbished or remanufactured products, so products being given an, a second life, which in fact we don't see happening a lot in our network at the moment yet. It's something that um, we believe uh, are still opportunities, uh, a lot of opportunities to, to uh, work with that. Uh, but also looking at opportunities for lifetime extension, uh, setting criteria on warranty, repairability, uh, upgradability, etc., cetera, um, hazardous chemicals, um, and also uh, going beyond the topic of green public procurement, also identifying how uh, social aspects in the entire value chain can be improved by asking for human rights due diligence processes. So in the registration form, people got the opportunity to include um, uh, questions and we saw that many people were asking how you could use eco labels and what we see is that the way eco labels are used in procurement differs a lot between regions so we see for instance in Asia and the United States um, that uh, the requirement for a specific eco label um, can really be part of the tender and many eco labels include a lot of the above mentioned topics already um, whereas in Europe, um, the practice is really to include criteria and use eco-labels more as a means of verification to show as a tenderer that you actually comply with those criteria. Um, so in the use stage, there are also a lot of opportunities for organizations to, um, uh, to improve the performance of their ICT. And um, I give some examples here on the slide. Um, the one that I really wanted to highlight, because that was an eye opener to me personally, is that um, several organizations mentioned that when new uh, types of phones are added to the, uh, add to the collection um, that employees can choose from, all of a the sudden they see a peak in uh, people losing their phones or phones being broken. And so that they can uh, replace their phone earlier than uh, they should have, according to the normal agreement uh, and the use agreement. So what I really like um, about uh, the steps in Norwegian County took is that they said, well, um, if your phone is lost or damaged, you will get the same one back until the lease period is over. And that really um, takes away the incentive for people to, um, well, to lose their phone uh, in order to kind of get the latest model. And here I would like to give the floor to my colleague Kuno uh, to talk you through some examples for contract management. Yes, thank you very much, Marika. Um, just keep on sharing your slides, and I it's only two slides I will use. Um, I've been working on this topic for now, I think almost 10 years, and we didn't just start from scratch on this. And we have done uh, lots of pilots and uh, small actions. And actually the reason we went on collaborating internationally is because at some level we couldn't go any further than what we did in the pilots because it's a global market. So in order to do this we had some pilots in the tender phase but also in the contract management because we found out that uh, once we established a framework contract uh, there was a bit of an issue that 
it took about four years before you can change it again. And to be honest, the changing of the models is quite fast in this sector. So actually during the contract management, there's a lot of change. You need to realize that uh, you have to talk to the supplier what you can or what they can offer. One of the examples was that we had a framework contract uh, stipulating that we needed to buy Samsung or um, Apple phones or another brand. But we wanted to do a work with Fairphone, which is a disruptor in a small company in Netherlands and Belgium. And they can be fully dismantled and put together again. And if you want an upgrade on your camera, you can just go to the store and get one. Uh, so we did a pilot, but it was not allowed within the contract. However, there was a clause which allowed us to do a small pilot. So we talked to the supplier and everyone agreed we could do it. Uh, unfortunately, the Fairphone was still too small to actually provide all the phones for the whole national government. So we hope in the next hand right now that we can start uh, using it because it's a really interesting uh, model. So another thing we did is that it's not just about buying a better product, which you can change also a little bit during the contract period, but also in operational management, we did a couple of workshops with the people involved on the ground in practice and see what they could come up with. And they came up with very small things, which in fact, if you add them all together are quite important, like changing um, the cover from your phone. So it's a better cover, so it uh, protects your phone better. Also ideas about using old uh, things around it or cables and how can you convert that to other use. So there was a lot of initiatives there in the sector itself also they were working on software and looking at energy savings they can do by um, changing the software packages or the the, uh, the how do you call this the things you do when you organize your software because a lot of the time um, the work packages in the software were on all the time and they didn't need to be so they were using the internet and using a lot of energy without any use and there was also some things that didn't work out as we planned. And one of the examples was from Canada. Uh, I like it very much because they asked the supplier to do products without packaging. Because yeah, why do you need all this packaging all the time? The only thing you do when you buy when you got it is throw it away. So they said, okay, we don't do it. Um, so they got all the equipment without packaging. However, after some time, they found out there was a bit of an issue there. Um, now all the packaging was thrown away in the factory or at uh, the supplier. And then in the end, you are not changing the waste, you're just moving the waste from the one organization to the other. So you always have to look carefully what's happening there. Let's go to the next slide. So um, we talked not only to the procurers, but also to the people inside uh, doing the internal management, which in IT is a lot of people, all kinds of service models. And we are also looking at another organization part, which is what do you do after you've used it? Which is not procuring, but selling. It's not buying, but selling. It's a weird thing that uh, the government usually doesn't do that. Uh, they're used to buy products, use them and throw them away. What if you have refurbished it or when, what you can do can be given another life, then you can actually sell it. We did um, find the organization doing that and uh, we had a lot of discussion okay what's the next step so we looked at sustainability and actually you can sell a laptop for a second life and they can use it for another two or three years after some upgrades um, and we also found companies in the in the netherlands so there were kind of seven eight pretty good companies going to do that so it's a local market uh, however Solving this issue and how to do it, it took us about three, four months. But then we had another issue. It took us about one and a half to two years to discuss how to wipe the data. And the data was a bit of an issue because we have all kinds of security levels within the government, uh, one to five. And everyone said, yeah, but if there's just a very small risk, we cannot do anything, you know? And we found out that we're only talking about very high risk security issue, which is about 5% of all the laptops, like from the prime minister, but even from the king or the queen. So we said, okay, we don't discuss about that anymore. These will be destroyed anyway. 
So we solved that issue, but that took about two years in comparison to the sustainable issues. And that's a very interesting story here. Uh, once you go down this rabbit hole of the very big changes, you'll find your um, issues, which you take a little bit more time to solve. But once you've solved it, it actually counts. And so we finally solved that problem. And there was another issue there, and that's the logistics. So the discussion was, okay, where do I wipe the data? Do I wipe the data on the floor in situ? Or do I wipe them at the organization who's wiping the data? Finally, we ended up doing the data wiping twice. For whatever reason, it now seems to be the best uh, solution. So we do it internally, and then the organization that will get the laptops to change it will wipe them again. Um, it's a bit of an overkill, but at least it's being reused again for a part. And also there's a bit of an issue there that people forgot internally. When you throw it away, you're not used to include all the cables and uh, things around it, because usually you throw it away, who cares? But once you want to reuse them, you need all these accessories. So that's one of the other lessons we learned. Uh, this is a very good opportunity to extend the lifetime with almost two, sometimes three or even four or five years, if you do it properly. And then you can, uh, however, you can include all the other aspects of logistics and uh, telling people what to do. And that organizational aspects takes a lot of time. But once you have organized it and reorganized it, it will stay there for a long time. So that's the good part of it. And one final anecdote about it. Uh, once they started uh, reusing screens, they forgot to inform the movers that actually these were for reuse. So they put them all together like they always do. So they thought they had informed everyone except the, and they throw them all on top of each other, which meant that 30% was broken on the bottom. Uh, so details important. So the procurement here is um, what we can say all these little things together. And that's why you see this picture. It's like we are just starting a bigger chain and you have to dig in the details and pursue and be persistent and persevere before you actually can change the whole model. And that's what we try to do. And everyone has to do their own bit to make it work. Thank you. Over to the next one. Fung, I can't hear you. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. And uh, I would like to thank Marik and also Kuno for giving us a very nice overview, but most importantly, <clears throat> highlights uh, the real challenge during implementation. And this is where we really need to see um, the experience of um, different cases and also from different practices and also to work together. Um, the, the next session, I would like to hand over to my colleague, uh, Farid Yaker, who is a program officer in UNEP, working on uh, sustainable procurement. Farid, uh, I hand over the floor to you. You may want to share your screen and you have five minutes. While we are waiting for Farid to share the screen, I again encourage um, everyone to use the chat box as much as I can. I already see some uh, nice link and uh, there has been one very active uh, participant sending questions and uh, I encourage everyone to do so. And thank you so much. Uh, I'm Rakesh for doing that. So uh, Farid, I hope you can speak. You are muted. Uh, Farid, would you confirm that you can hear us? Okay, it seems there is some connection issue. So, uh, in order to not to delay the process, um, let me have a proposal that I would like to hand over now to Rainier, uh, who will follow up the presentation of Marik and also um, Kuno to give us on the introduction to the Circular and Fair ICT Pact. 
uh, because Farid will be also moderating the question and answer session so that uh, he can come in later anyway to to give us a, a brief introduction. Uh, so, um, Rainier, thanks a lot for coming in earlier. And uh, Rainier Haidt is a senior policy maker in the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and uh, Water Management. Together with um, Marik, uh, both of them will give us now an introduction uh, of the CFIT initiative, <clears throat> which you will be <clears throat> very curious to hear. So, the floor are yours, uh, Rainier and Marik. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fong. And I see that Marik is starting to share our screen. Uh, yes, um, I'm really very pleased to be able to speak today on an initiative that we have started together with a number of other countries, which is called the Circular and Fair ICT Pact. And um, we've already heard some very good examples of why it is important to work on ICT through procurement and what procurement can really do to make ICT more circular, more fair, more sustainable. Um, and the 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 pact that we've started is really a way of uh, cooperating, of joining forces, working together to make that happen. Um, Marika, I'm still not seeing this, the, the, the slides. I'm sure they're coming. Apologies, Maybe. because it says on my screen that they are shared. Let me try again. Maybe it's just on my side. It's always the hard uh, thing with these kind of uh, things. <clears throat> I think it's always interesting to see how important ICT is. <laughs> In practice, yes. Back colleagues, if I, if I can speak. Um, can you see my screen now? Uh, nope. No, it says you're starting to share content. Yeah. That's strange. Chiara, um, would it be possible for you to share instead of Marik? I will simply continue with my, my story and, and we'll see if the sheets uh, catch up. Oh, <laughs> nice. It's there. Um, there. There it comes. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, so the circular and fair ICT pact is, is really a way of, of, of joining forces, of working together as procurers, because of course that's the important uh, issue that we have. If we want to use procurement as a means to, to help the market get more circular and get more fair, uh, then the next step is that we need to have procurers on board and, and make sure that they know what to ask for. Um, and that's really not very easy uh, because you see there, there are really two kinds of procurers. There are the followers. <clears throat> they don't really know what to ask for. And then most procurers are in that, um, in that category. Uh, they, they, they want to, to be ambitious, but they need the good examples. And there are, of course, the, the front runners. They create the good examples and they're really the people that can, can uh, shift the dial and make sure that we get more innovative and more sustainable. But when we talk to front runners, and we've talked to a lot of them, uh, they run into a big problem. And that's what you see on the screen. Um, even the biggest front runners that we are talking to, they're really tiny mice uh, when compared to the huge organizations who are building ICT, uh, like the, the Apples and the Dells and the HPs and the Lenovo's and you name them. Um, and for instance, in the Netherlands, I think we buy uh, 50,000 laptops for the national government a year. And it's, it's, it's just a tiny fragment of what Apple produces in a, in a day. So this is uh, a problem both for us, because then we can't uh, we can't force the market to take steps, but it's also a problem for the market itself, who doesn't really know which of these very uh, lots of mice to listen to. Uh, do they need to go left? Do they need to go right? Who is really driving the innovation? So it's it's there's a, a, a disparity in our size, and that doesn't really help uh, doesn't really help us change. And if you go to the next slide, yes, our solution, of course, would be to pull our procurement power to to work together to create a bigger uh, cooperative of uh, procurers uh, asking for more or less the same same thing. Um, and CFIT is really our way of trying to make that happen, the Circular and Fair ICT Pact. Um, and if you go to the next slide, what we do is, is aimed really at both the front-running procurers and uh, at the followers. 
uh, and what we try to do, and, and this is uh, the important part, we try to organize them into buyer groups. We say, start working together, come together, uh, learn from each other, start uh, reaching out to the market together, and, and, and really uh, work together in, in, in a buyer group. You do your own procurement, but you can do your learning together. Um, and in the past, we, we did this on an international scale, and, and, and people said, well, yeah, bring, bring, back, bring together procurers from different countries at the same time in, in one international buyer group. But that, that, do, that really doesn't work, because procurers, they don't travel, uh, they often don't, they're not comfortable speaking English or speaking the same language. So what we said, what we really need is a buyer group in each different country, in each different region even, uh, where they can meet their own peers, speak in their own language, uh, uh, speak about the same market, that same local market. Um, so what we propose in the uh, CFIT is to say, well, let's um, ask uh, coordinating organizations, let's ask countries or regions to, uh, to join the pact and start their own buyer group in their own country and region. Uh, so we get a, a network of buyer groups in all these different places. And then uh, from that point, we join them together. So uh, on an international scale, we make sure that the things that are, people are learning in Norway, for instance, uh, are also, also find their way to Korea or uh, vice versa, um, so that we really boost our learning capacity uh, and, and use what we, what we have. A second thing that we can do then is bring together the people from these different buyer groups and say, well, Let's now start a market dialogue on a really on a higher level and uh, make sure that uh, we don't just talk to the market um, as the Netherlands or Sweden or whatever, but we talk to the, uh, to the market uh, on behalf of all of these different countries and all the buyers that, that are in the buyer groups within these countries so that we have a more a far more equal dialogue with the market uh, and that we're not talking to the regional uh, suppliers but to the, to, the, to the head office and, and the people really uh, invested in how uh, their ICT is, has been designed. So this is really the, 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 the core of what we are proposing. Um, and if you go to the next slide, then you can see that we have started out with a very nice group of participants uh, who are really front running. And um, we started out last year. Uh, and uh, Austria and Belgium joined. Uh, Canada is in the process of joining. Uh, and, and already the Circular Innovation Council in Canada has joined our pact. Uh, Germany and the Netherlands, of course, uh, Norway, Switzerland, and the UK are all on board and, and really trying to make this work. Um, so we're building this up now. And we're now in the next step, uh, making it bigger and, and reaching out to, to more countries. And we hope. Uh, today can be a starting point in reaching out to you. And if you're interested, you can say, well, let's have a further discussion and, and see if we can somehow uh, cooperate in, within this uh, pact. And with that, I would like to hand over to Marike, who can take us a little deeper into the workings of the pact. And I think you're still muted, Monique. Thank you. Classic mistake. Um, so building on what Rainier was sharing, the, the Circular and Fair ICT Pact has two main uh, categories of participants who sign the pact and who actively participate within the partnership, coordinating organizations and procuring organizations. Coordinating organizations are governmental organizations that are focusing on promoting SPP in their country or in their region. And um, so what will, um, what will you get out of uh, participating in the pact? Um, besides um, joining a network of like-minded organizations, um, what we see is that um, it, it's really an easy network to exchange a lot of knowledge, approaches and ideas, um, which really help avoiding to duplicate um, and uh, duplicate uh, efforts and uh, trying to avoid to reinvent the wheel. Um, 
we're de developing tools and guidance really based on the needs of, of all of our participants. So if participants indicate that there are certain uh, needs, um, then this is simply something that uh, could be initiated um, by each and every participant within the pact. Um, procuring organizations um, can be public organizations with an ambition to procure circular and fair ICT. Um, like Rainier said, we have front runners in this space who have been working on the topic already for a, a number of years, but we also have um, organizations that have the ambition, but really are uh, more at the starting level. Um, all organizations um, can, can join us and sign the pact. And what, uh, what is it that we offer procuring organizations? Um, again, a network for learning, testing, and knowledge sharing, uh, bringing uh, through all those different buyer groups, uh, the, the buyers in different countries and the experiences from different countries together in the network. Um, we're in the process of developing uh, a circular and fair procurement toolkit, um, and we do that within uh, a guidance and criteria working group. And like Rainier shared, um, what we see um, is really valuable, particularly um, when we speak to front running uh, procurers, is that um, the front run the, the procuring organizations often find it difficult individually uh, to have the conversations with market players. And if we can have uh, the discussions on the direction um, we would like to go all together with the sector, um, it's really important uh, to have those discussions and dialogues together. So when I say um, the Circular and Fair ICT Pact is uh, a combination of procuring and coordinating organizations, we also realize that with this group of organizations, we won't be able to change the sector. Um, effective change uh, towards sustainability really requires a multi-stakeholder collaboration. And uh, this means that we're um, currently also in the process of um, shaping the relations with, uh, with sector players, both the more traditional sector players, uh, suppliers, resellers, the OEMs, the brands, um, and producers of ICT, but also looking at innovative startups, NGOs, uh, and labeling organizations that cover ICT, as well as research institutes. Um, when we have the dialogue on what are the opportunities and the, the, the challenges that we're facing, we feel we can really uh, shift the needle uh, quicker than, than any of us could do individually. Um, very briefly, uh, the way cir the circular and fair uh, <laughs> the CFIT is uh, set up is that, um, as Rainier explained, it's a network of buyer groups which come together at the platform of the CFIT uh, collaboration. And um, at the central level, we have a secretariat um, that is currently hosted by the Netherlands, um, who are facilitating um, consultancy contracts, but also the working groups and the steering committee meetings to ensure that uh, the needs of the procurers and the, pre the coordinating organizations are being met. Current working groups focus on guidance and criteria, ethical procurement of ICT and laptops and smartphones. So the market dialogue uh, working group is currently in preparation. And um, on a more, uh, well, governance level, uh, we have the steering committee uh, up and running, uh, communication and outreach working group and a monitoring working group. Um, the, the buyer groups at the national level are really um, about the national and regional network of procuring organizations. And um, while it feels like a buyer group is all about um, learning and sharing, what we really aim for is implementation and action. So based on actual uh, pilots, on actual uh, more sustainable procurement steps, uh, in the pre-tender phase, the tender phase, but also in the post-tender phase, we want to really create change and start procuring better, uh, learn from each other, uh, share the knowledge, and uh, work towards a joint market strategy. Um, the working group on guidance and criteria is um, currently working on putting our framework towards uh, sustain, circular and fair uh, procurement of ICT into practice. 
And um, so in CFID, we say the core strategies to make an impact um, on the key themes uh, that we see in the ICT sector are buying less, buying be better, using better and using longer. So what does that mean in practice? That is something that we're currently with the working group working out and uh, developing uh, examples and recommendations on what procuring organizations can do to take steps in all of these strategies. We also have a working group on ethical procurement of ICT. Um, I guess you could say that um, in the uh, sustainable public procurement space, ethical procurement is something that uh, we currently have less experience on and is also experienced as something that is more uh, complicated to integrate in procurement. It's all about how to ensure um, that the process of due diligence, risk-based due diligence, is something that is really incorporated in the supply chain, chains of the products that we procure. And uh, the working group on ethical procurement is currently really looking into um, what are ways to effectively do this. And um, exchanging experiences and approaches, and uh, this will no doubt feed into recommendations for the guidance and criteria working group to again bring to the forefront on how to do circular and fair procurement of ICT. And in view of time, I think we've addressed this, uh, this bit of market dialogue already quite a bit. So we really believe that this is something uh, that is essential. Uh, we cannot sit in our ivory towers, as we would say in Dutch, um, to think about how we can promote sustainable uh, ICT from the procurement side. We really need to do this in collaboration and in dialogue with the sector and other experts uh, like people in labeling organizations, NGOs and network organizations. Um, <clears throat> So currently, as you saw on the slide uh, that Rainier presented, we have a group of mainly uh, European uh, countries involved, in, as well as Canada. Um, and we have the ambition to really bring together an international uh, collaboration. And um, when organizations, procuring or coordinating organizations join, um, each organization can indicate itself what working groups you would like to participate in. Um, also, it's possible to initiate new topics for working groups um, to the steering committee. Um, well, if you identify specific needs for your country or your region, uh, that should be addressed. It's also important to note that we said, well, um, since we are a growing organization or a growing collaboration, the steering committee has open seats for new members. So if uh, members have the time uh, to also be involved on a more strategic level, it's still possible also to um, put yourself forward for being elected in the steering committee, uh, because we also want to have the opportunity that if, for instance, Asian organizations are joining or Latin American organizations are joining, that they can also have a seat at the table um, to ensure that the uh, membership is really represented. Um, and if there is an interest, um, we are also uh, talking about um, the possibility to set up regional working groups because we feel that that could be a really helpful, um, not only from a time zone perspective, sometimes also from a language perspective and a, and a regional practice perspective to ensure that beyond one country uh, within CFEED, we facilitate also a regional collaboration. So that was in a nutshell um, what, how we work within the Circular and Fair ICT Pact. And uh, with this approach, we really aim to implement a procurement strategy um, that accelerates the market for Circular and Fair ICT. And in doing so, we of course want to contribute to a more sustainable ICT sector and make an impact on uh, circularity, uh, ethical uh, aspects in the supply chain, energy and climate, and chemicals impacts. And with that, um, I would like to um, yeah, end this presentation. Um, we have a small animation if um, we have time for that. Um, Fong, I'm not sure what would be appropriate. I can't hear you, Fong.
Our modern world is built on ICT. Our computers and smartphones connect us, support us and provide us with countless opportunities for participation and business. There are over 4 billion smartphones in circulation today and that number is still growing. But the huge success of ICT is not without costs. The devices we use are short-lived and easily discarded. To satisfy our hunger for the latest model, we mine and build and discard with great impact on our environment and on human rights. Exploitation and child labor still happen. Carbon emissions from ICT already surpass those of aviation and are still growing. Our pile of e-waste grows by 50 million tons per year, 80% of which is not recycled. Now imagine we can change that. As procurers of ICT, we share the responsibility for its negative effects. But we also hold the key to help create a sustainable ICT industry. Individually, we're too small to make a difference. But if we work together, our demand can help accelerate the change towards a circular and fair ICT industry. The Circular and Fair ICT Pact is the way to bring us together. The Pact works by creating an international network of procurers. First, every country or region that joins the Pact as a coordinating organization sets up its own buyer group in its own language. Here, procurers gain easy access to all the tested criteria, best practices and tools accumulated within the network. This brings procurers up to speed and creates real action. They will learn together, innovate together and approach the market together. By smartly monitoring our results, we can demonstrate our collective impact. On an international level, the Pact connects the buyer groups and facilitates knowledge sharing between them. It also supports working groups where front runners come together in a dialogue with the market, policy makers and NGOs. This helps the industry guide the direction of its future innovations. And it helps procurers to fine-tune their demand with ambitious but feasible criteria and guidance. To make real impact, we'll focus not only on the products we buy, but also on how we use them and what we do with them after we're done with them. For example, by simply extending the lifetime of our laptops and smartphones from 4 to 6 years, we can save almost 30% of carbon emissions. And that's just the start of our journey. Together we can help make ICT circular and fair. Visit circularandfairictpack.com Fung, you're unmuted. You're muted, sorry. Thanks everyone for spending the time uh, or first three minutes on this video. And uh, we'll be posting the link in the video so that you can also re-watch again. And uh, I would like now to give the floor to my colleague Farid Yaker, who is a uh, program officer on sustainable procurement in UNEP. Farid, uh, uh, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Fung. Do you see <clears throat> my presentation? Yes. Go okay, ahead. Excellent. Thanks. And I'm really pleased today because we have almost uh, 60 uh, participants that are uh, have joined us today. <clears throat> I guess we have many members from the uh, Asia Pacific GPP network and I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, the Republic of Korea for their support to the network. Um, I guess uh, we 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 really uh, we 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 are we develop, we're supporting today we're pleased to support today the, the Netherlands, our friends, Dutch friends, um, and I will present, tell you why, you know, we are supporting the CIFIT initiative. First of all, our mission as UNEP and the SPP team that I lead is to support our member states in the implementation of sustainable public procurement and also to develop tools and solutions to enhance the performance of SPP. We um, have our, our action is uh, integrated in the framework of goal 12 of the SDGs and we are in particular 
in charge of monitoring the progress of target 12.7 and we monitor we measure the indicator 1271 uh, on a regular basis our vision is that sustainable procurement is a good procurement and we work with government public authorities consultant experts academic institutions and the private sector <clears throat> why do we support the CFIT pact First of all, I told you that we have the mandate to support our member states on SPP implementation and also to accelerate the shift to SPP at global level. And as you saw from the presentation, CIVIT, CIVIT fits perfectly with this, these two objectives. We are also a co-lead of the One Planet Network. The CIVIT Pact is under the One Planet Network SPP program work plan. And very importantly, we uh, appreciate the approach of CFIT, which was presented. It is a multi-stakeholder initiative. It includes public buyers, but also other stakeholders. It is about scaling, scaling up the demand for uh, greener options, but also harmonizing this demand through shared knowledge, through uh, by the uh, common joint engagement with the, the market. It is also um, proposing innovative ways of looking at uh, procurement, for example, the pre and post tender stages. And uh, this is a high impact sector also of uh, UNEP, which is focusing on circularity, which is one of our major sustainability objectives. And last but not least, through this program, we uh, hope to uh, get access to new tools that will help, that we will use to support our projects and then our member states in SPP implementation. <clears throat> so, what are we doing to, to support the CIFIC Pact? Organizing webinars like we do today, but also organizing bilateral meetings with countries interested in joining the CIFIC Pact. And I hope that today some new countries will emerge and please express your interest if you would like uh, to uh, join as, as in a, a country. So, I think we're ready to move into uh, the Q&A session. I saw that there is already uh, some questions and uh, our uh, Dutch colleagues have responded in the chat to uh, the questions. I uh, will stop sharing. And uh, I guess we're ready to take some uh, questions from the audience. So, please take the floor or just send your question in the chat. Um, I'm so, happy to... we, oh. yeah, sorry. Uh, we are also preparing a poll, but uh, before we start, I think we can start answering some of the question. Um, colleagues, uh, just a, a technical reminder, if you want to take the floor, please raise your hand. So we will assign the floor to you. Otherwise, we will not be able to, um, to give you the floor. Okay. And, um, Okay, I see a hand uh, that's working. So please do so uh, accordingly as Marika has been doing. Um, maybe if I read, you can also read some questions already in the chat. I saw uh, um, yeah. or some question from uh, Rakesh quite, was quite active. I think it was responded. Uh, yeah. Kuno responded. Then uh, Kathleen also. I guess there's Robin. Kuno responded to Robin. So I think we're fine. So please raise, raise your hand. I'm, I'm happy to respond to Kathleen's question on uh, how the pact is set up. I think that's okay. uh, quite relevant. Then, Marike. Um, so Kathleen was asking um, in many of the initiatives um, between different countries on uh, sustainable procurement, for instance, the um, uh, Make ICT Fair and Procure Plus are funded through subsidies and therefore have, have a beginning and an end. And after the program, it's really difficult to remain uh, active uh, with the same group of organizations. Um, so, with that in mind, because that's also a challenge that we see um, also ourselves being actively involved in a range of different subsidy, uh, subsidized programs, um, we are really uh, focusing on setting up the core of the pact um, as a, um, uh, well, kind of a self-initiated and self-organized uh, program. So, currently, all participants are really actively uh, contributing 
um, to everything within the pact, to the working groups and uh, to the things that are being developed. Um, and where possible, um, uh, organizations, the coordinating organizations also provide uh, some additional uh, funding uh, to the overall uh, activities. Um, yeah, so in order to avoid that exact risk, um, we decided to um, to ensure that the, the basis is covered by the members. And um, we're currently um, seeing that we want to be active and involved uh, until 2030. Um, and well, if longer, if need be, and if the energy is still there. Um, but we, we believe that if we really want to create a change in this complicated topic and sector, it's important to have a long term outlook. I hope that clarifies the question, uh, Kathleen. Thank you, Marike. And Kathleen, if you want to take the floor, don't hesitate. If you want to uh, have a follow up on this. I don't see any hands, colleagues. Maybe we can launch the, um, the poll. Um, somehow the polling function has been disabled in the system, so apologies that we're mm. trying to get a solution. Uh, I really also encourage others who in the chat uh, who can answer yeah. that, or maybe, uh, Kuno, I saw you already type uh, the answers. Maybe uh, mm. if there are some really interesting questions, Kuno, you can also um, verbally uh, share your opinion on that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. I saw some very interesting questions in the in the chat. Um, and these are quite relevant, like questions like, is there a technical working group to, about standards and norms and stuff like that? Uh, and yes, there's many uh, discussions about as the many research being done. However, what we noticed is that uh, some of these discussions are further down the chain on product development. And in the procurement, we focus mostly on what kind of simple tools you can use, like a label. Uh, so we have been working on finding out which of the labels work best in procurement. How do you do that? Um, and after, behind that, you will have a lot of these technical working groups, which are important for us. Uh, but we do not focus that, uh, on that issue in detail yet. So that may be something for the future. We have to discuss that. Uh, so there were a cut kind of, um, I also responded on the LCC life cycle costing. We find that popping up all the time. Also, the commission has done quite a bit of work in trying to develop an LCC tool. However, the data in this sector are not good yet. Models are changing quite rapidly. Um, so we haven't really figured out how to work LCC for, in my opinion, that requires further thinking um, and piloting to see whether we can make it work. So this is something for further development as well. Many good questions on that. Also on the labels, uh, I find it interesting to see that we have uh, two global large labels like EP and TCO certified. Other smaller labels in Europe stopped, uh, like Nordic Swan. Uh, Blue Angel still has some of them, um, which is also a good thing because we don't want to have too many labels. However, we don't have good insight in the labels that are in Asia. So, for example, EPIT uh, has a specific regional focus on some issues and uh, TCU certified is worldwide. So that may be up to a discussion for Asia, which are the most dominant labels for you to use. And those were most of the questions I saw right uh, now. Kuno, maybe the, the question from Rakesh. It's interesting. Uh, the latest EU CEAP package. Yes. The the Circular economy package in the EU yeah. is quite interesting for us because there's a lot of plans. Also, there's another uh, electronics. There's quite a strategy uh, evolving. I think what I said in the chat as well, the most dominant interesting development currently is the new eco design directive, or at least the proposals they're working on that because these actually um, put quite some issues there on, for example, uh, standardizing uh, parts of the products. And also taking into account, uh, I think the materials, what are in, what's in there, the chemicals and things that shouldn't be in there. So the eco design directive is the most important for us for the product development. Um, so, yeah, you can find that on the website of the EU. It's a, it's, it's still under construction, so it will take some years. And I think that helps. However, um, yeah, 
we need to work on the details and, and find what's the most important in, in the chain. Also, one of the issues I didn't mention in the chat, but quite interestingly, you have the dominant global industries, but you also have more and more disruptors. So the small companies uh, for a region or a country, they used to be only on the refurbished side, for example, uh, circular computing in the UK or smaller ones in the Netherlands or whatever country you are. But also the brands like Fairphone, um, it is interesting to see whether they can grow or whether they will, uh, well, not survive because the other ones are too big. And uh, of course, we hope that if we buy more regional, then it's easier to change uh, circularity. I don't know if you responded to a question from Kathleen about the funding. Yeah, we just did. Okay. I've also seen a question about uh, whether we'll involve the procurement of green data centers. I think that's a very pertinent question. Um, what we did in setting up the circular and fair ICT pact is that we said uh, we need to build up, uh, build up our scale. So um, we started out saying let's 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 start out with a focus on smartphones and laptops uh, and and uh, uh, products that re are closely related to that. Um, and, and and once we have this this working, we can also extend our uh, our aim towards, for instance, data centers that will be very high on our list because it's a really important uh, procurement uh, and really um, influential uh, thing in terms of CO2 emissions, et cetera, uh, but also software and, and maybe other products as well. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this will be on our agenda very soon. I think you can respond to the poll. It would really be helpful to have your opinion on some questions regarding ICT. And um, so yeah. in the meantime, yeah, I think the poll is up. Uh, yeah. Leandro, if I see you, you have you make a, you had an interesting comment. If you can uh, just express it verbally, so you can unmute yourself, I suppose. So we have time limit for the the poll. Um, I would suggest uh, that, uh, sorry, the polling was taking a bit time. Um, Kiara, would you relaunch the poll? So we just we were testing the technology and um, uh, we would like to spend less than five minutes on a very, very simple poll so that to get yeah. your understanding. Yeah. Kiara, would you restart the poll? Okay. Farid, um, would you read the question and also give some yes. instruction? Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, first question is about, in your opinion, how has circularity progressed in the IT sector over the last five years? <clears throat> so, you have uh, four possibilities of responses significantly, moderately, slowly, not increased. Then you can just submit your response, I guess, and then move to the next question. I have an issue, Fong, moving uh, to the next question. We, we give uh, 20 seconds more ah, okay. in case Polly question. wants to think. Okay. So we have we do it together then. Okay. Yeah, we do it together. Yeah. All right. So please, you have 20 seconds to respond. In your opinion, how, how has circularity progressed in the IT sector over the last five years? Then you have four options. Okay. Yeah, we are moving to the next question. Do you think that the environmental footprint of the IT sector has been reduced in the Asia Pacific region or has increased? Obviously over the last, we'd say uh, three, five years. So we have another 20 seconds to respond. I'm sorry, Fong, but I don't see the the options. It's uh,
Um, I, I can I see that. No problem. Yeah, I have a blank uh, screen. Probably Below the question. Yeah. You are, you are the moderator, so you, you are not allowed to to vote. Yeah, I guess. Probably. If you can uh, then uh, <laughs> read Sorry out for the that. questions. Yeah. No worries. Oops. Okay. Are you, for it, can you see the question now? Yeah, no. now I see another question, but I still can't. Uh, it's blinking, and I yeah. have a blank uh, box below the question. It says, in your opinion, which of the following issues is the easiest to address in the purchase? But then I don't have the options. Can you read out? Yes. Um, okay. So the question is, in your opinion, which are the following issues is the easiest to address in the purchase of ICD products? A chemicals, B e waste, C energy consumption, D labor rights, E social equality, and uh, equity. Sorry, F others. Um, please specify in your chat. If you select others, you can type something there. Yeah. So I think time is up. Farid, Farid, can you, <clears throat> sorry, can you see that? No, no, I can't, please. Uh, okay, keep reading. so the next question is, in your opinion, which of the following are the main sustainability issues that should be addressed by procurers in the purchase of ICT products? Actually, the options are the same as the last round. And this is other ones that should be addressed, in your opinion, including chemicals, e-waste, energy consumption, labor rights, social equity and other issues. I think you will be pressed within one minute. So, uh, yeah, sorry for that, but also it's your intuitive answer. That will be great to, to see. Thank you. Okay, uh, the poll is almost over. We have a one, one final question. Uh, this is an open question. Are you aware of any regional initiative uh, in Asia Pacific to bring together IT procuring organizations? And uh, please do provide your answer uh, in the text box. And you have one minute. Thank you. So Farid, uh, we'll need two minutes to compile the results. Uh, maybe you can continue moderating the question because I have seen new questions in the chat. Uh, you may want to screen some of them and the colleagues in, in the panel that they might want to answer. And we'll be uh, shortly showing the, the, the result of the poll. Thank you. Hand over back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Farid. you, Fung. But I have an issue of accessing the chat. You know, I still have technical issue with uh, the uh, the webex so i don't know if you the dutch colleagues can read the question in the chat and address them kuno marike there, there are some questions here also about the labeling again i see um or actually they are helping us out uh, this is the list of the labels available uh we have seen the list from the eco labels uh general network, which is quite interesting. What we saw that before, one of the discussions we had is like, but which are the dominant ones? Yeah, that, that sounds a bit monopolistic, but mm. found out that, for example, Ecolabel in the EU doesn't really work for ICT. They stopped developing it. And um, because the labels in itself 
have different aspects in them and we'd like to focus on uh, what are the main issues they actually can certify because if they do the work for the procurer it helps us but if they are completely different it's very difficult to use in your procurement so um one of the questions i have back to these people like it would be interesting to find out which are the most interesting for procurers to use uh, because not all of them are available there's another question here uh, Yes, please. Um, is there a list of mostly procured ICT by governments? The, the tenders usually include the list of what they buy. Uh, I'm not quite sure what is meant by that in terms of uh, do they mean brands or the products? And, and one of the obvious thing we use ourselves right now is st stuff like laptops and phones and cables and, and things like that. But of course, if you look at ICT currently in the government, this, uh, this range of products is growing. For example, we are working at Rijkswaterstaat and one of the new big uh, buy of ICT is sensors to determine the water quality. So one of the tricky parts of ICT is that once you think you have solved the problem of the laptop, there are five more products in other regions or included in even your chair uh, with the GPS center, whatever. So ICT is everywhere. And yes, of course, these lists are available. Um, we do not have them collected or something. Uh, Kuno, regarding the, the labels, um, can I ask you if the we spoke about TCO and EPIT, are they fulfilling the needs of the procurers? And this is also yes, that's a very interesting question. one. Um, could, yeah. Because I didn't say that the labels didn't mm. really make a difference five years ago, but the new versions of both EPEAT mm. and uh, ECO certified actually dig into circularity and fare more thoroughly than they did before. So especially TCO certified new generation nine, and mm -hmm. I think also currently has some kind of um, uh, update. It's out there for consultation currently. These are quite important and because they cover most of the needs of the procurer that they didn't do before. So that saves you a lot of time because you don't have to check in the chain whether uh, your needs are being fulfilled. And do you know how do they compare with the Asian uh, national uh, eco labels like uh, in Korea, in China, in Japan, maybe in Thailand. Uh, in these countries, are they used or do procurers use their own national labels? Uh, to be honest, uh, we do have experts on this, but I never looked okay. at that. So that would be an interesting one for discussion. Yes, maybe with the Asia Pacific uh, Network Office, someone can reply from the participants because we have attendees representing those countries. Yeah, sorry, we have been mostly focusing on our region, of course, and yeah. North America. Because, uh, well, we had the opportunity to do that. Any other question in the poll? Uh, Fong, are we ready to uh, disclose the results yeah. from the, the poll? If I may, so colleagues, you are still welcome to send questions in the chat, but I would like to provide a very brief overview. Uh, I think greatly we hit almost 50 uh, participants today so hopefully the result can be representative actually in the first question about uh, whether the circularity of the sector has progressed in the last five years uh, the answer is quite uh, distributed and but the majority didn't answer the question either because uh, um, the time limits or other reasons so i don't know whether we can draw some conclusive answer but in any way it's your impression so um i would say that's um probably the first question is quite interesting to see the results um uh, on this and you can also see the percentage um next one please so the second question is that whether the amount of footprint of the it sector has been reduced in the region um from the answer, I think um, uh, a majority, around 40%, is saying that it's increased or, or either increased or no change. Still, we have um, half of the people not answer, but in general, uh, uh, the percentage of answers saying it's reduced is uh, minor. 
And the third question. Sorry, the third question, uh, one slide before. Yes. Uh, I think we can ignore the, um, the, the, the last se uh, section, no answer. Uh, we can see that um, the following uh, sustainability issue need to be addressed. Also, it's quite uh, spread, but the top three are chemicals, e-waste and energy consumption. Uh, next question, please. And uh, which are the easiest one to address? Uh, energy one is easy to address from the survey and then followed by e-waste and chemicals. Next one, please. So the final question uh, was whether there was any or uh, is any information on regional network? Uh, nobody answered. Uh, it's just because we didn't receive any uh, name of network. So this means that uh, there is might be a market for our potential for us to work together. So I think I take this as a very positive um, <laughs> um, answer. And that's it for the poll. And Thank uh, you, Fung. Uh, any right. reaction, uh, Dutch colleagues, on the responses? Are they in line with your uh, expectation, your thoughts? Well, I find it interesting that everyone always thinks that energy is the most simple thing to you do. Correct. They always forget one thing. Use less ICT. So that's the example of uh, why do you need two screens where we always use only one? And um, why do you have a laptop and a phone and a screen all together turned on currently? So this is a simple thing that it, that somehow in other sectors we always fight now the discussion about using less materials for stuff, but somehow in ICT this is not on the agenda yet. It seems to be only doing more and more. So like also phone with dual SIM, you only need one phone for business and work. Simple issues, stuff like that. Thank you, Kuno. Yeah, we we forget yeah. that. Uh... The first rule in sustainable procurement is not to buy. You know, this will uh, really solve the most most of the problems if we if we can, of course. Um, Marike and Renier, uh, any reaction? I think we're close uh, to the end. Well, maybe as a last thought, when I was looking at the different impacts that we should be addressing uh, when looking at the impacts of ICT, for me, it was impossible to choose because I think um, that looking at the impacts of, of the entire life cycle of ICT, um, depending on the different steps, there are uh, urgent aspects um, on both ethical chemicals, uh, circularity um, and, and climate and energy that all needs our attention. Um, so for me, it was for that reason, a really difficult <laughs> question to answer because I didn't want to choose. Um, and I, I guess, um, yeah, that, that's something that I would like to have everyone keep in mind um, when you look at ICT, um, really think about the whole range of impacts and look at the life cycle impacts of, uh, of the products you're, you're aiming to procure and to see what are the aspects you can really uh, influence from the procurement side. I have one more aspect, uh, maybe what I miss in this discussion. We are also not looking at the value model too much yet. Um, one of the problems of reusing old ICT is that you need to upgrade them. That means that it costs extra and then you have to sell it again. So for some models that works like an Apple phone, for some model, these are, the costs are too low. You have to talk to the industry how to change that so it's easier to get to use that. But this also accounts for recycling. Uh, we have one of the best recyclers uh, of ICT in Belgium. They only retract gold and silver, I think. But there are more materials they can retract. Well, Rainier and Paris apps knows more, but because it's not uh, efficiently in costs, the business model doesn't work out. We don't do that yet. But this is something that we need to f further upgrade that we look at the business models because that finally will really change the market. Yeah, thanks, Okuno. That's very important. And also because there are different situations in different countries, I suppose the uh, outlook for recycling and the conditions for recycling in Asia are very different from Europe. So uh, very good opportunities of exchanging 
on, on this point and on others. And I think that's one good reason really to support the, the CFIT pact and all the exchange opportunities it, it offers in the working groups and in the, in the buyers group. So uh, I hope this uh, session and uh, the webinar was useful to present this amazing uh, initiative. We hope that uh, in UNEP, it will offer a blueprint for other sectors. And uh, you know, we look forward to uh, your further questions. You can reach out to us by email, then we will put you in touch with our uh, Dutch colleagues. Uh, we have attending our uh, friend Tuni from uh, our uh, regional office in, in Bangkok. I know that most of you are, are also in touch with her, so please don't hesitate to reach out to her. Um, and uh, maybe if you want to say a last word, uh, Fong and, and Dutch colleagues, the floor is open to you before closing the webinar. <clears throat> Thank you, Farid, for the closing. And uh, I, I would like to propose two points to see whether Dutch colleagues, Rainier, Marik, or Kuno, you want to say a few words about next step or what, what's your expectation after the webinar. Uh, from the logistics side, we'll be sharing all the slides, recording of the session, plus um, the video and other supporting documents so that you can get a whole package of the information today. Uh, before we close, I would like to uh, hand over the floor to the Dutch colleagues, whether you have any expectations or, um, let's say, uh, information to share. Thank you. Well, if I, if I may, uh, what I would really like to uh, express is the, the, the hope that if you think this is interesting for you uh, or might be interesting for your country or your region, please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, for uh, additional uh, comments or discussions or whatever. We are really open to uh, to talk about it and, and see how we can work together to make this initiative grow further and, and make it really, really powerful uh, in changing the ICT sector for the better. So please don't hesitate to reach out. The, the, the email is provided by, in the chat by Marike, cifit at rws.nl. <clears throat> Please don't hesitate. Thank you. Um, Marike Kuno, and then Kuno, or the other way. I, I'd just like to support um, what Rainier is saying, and I'd like to thank the UNEP team for organizing this session and everyone for participating. Um, and we're happy to, to take uh, the dialogue further if you're interested to learn more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. you have the last word. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, we started this initiative a long time ago. Um, it's thinking about ICT because for me, this is an enormous sector where I really think we need to think about what this is doing with our earth. Uh, so for me, it's really important, but the way we need to change it is really scattered all over the earth, all kinds of small initiatives, buying differently, refurbishing, remanufacturing. And we don't have all the knowledge. Actually, we started this because we don't have that much. We need to collaborate. So I think that's my main issue is everyone has to do their own bit and every step counts. And let's try to combine that and join up somehow to change this. So thank, thank you, Kuno, for this great conclusion. And we see you soon in a, another webinar from the APGPP network or UNEP or CFIT. Thank you very much for your participation. And thanks, colleague, for the organization. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.